Welcome to Manufacturer's Diary, a series where we spotlight the leaders and innovations shaping the future of manufacturing segment. Today I have with me Mr. Suraj Thodimarath, Managing Director for Asia Pacific Region at Vitur. Hello sir, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me on the show. Vitur began in 1968 and at that time the company was just focusing on elevator doors. But today it has grown and become a global supplier of a complete elevator systems. So how do you balance this rich legacy while embracing the new ideas and technologies? Yeah, so uh, the way it works is uh, doors still continue to be our biggest business. Not just because that's where we started, but it's by nature of the elevator. So if you look at an elevator, every component is one off, one cabin, one car frame, one motor, one controller. But when it comes to doors, the number of floors dictate the number of doors. So the doors will always be in multiples. So that's the reason why doors easily tend to be our biggest seller. We also make a whole lot of other components mm -hmm. except the controller, we make everything else. And one of the reasons behind this is Vitur got people with thorough systems knowledge. So our people know end to end about how an elevator functions. So when you combine that knowledge, it is allowing us to develop products across the range. And that is how we became specialists across different components. Operating across Europe, Asia and Latin America, Vitur is truly global. Now, how do you ensure that this rapid growth, it should not dilute your core values, which is especially safety and trust? Yeah, if you look at uh, Vitur's products, they have earned a reputation over a period of time, mm. uh, many decades actually. Mm. So our customers know what uh, we stand for. So today we are not in a position to actually justify the performance of our product or the safety record of our products. The history speaks for itself. And being a global company, we make products across the world, but at the same time, the control of the design is central. So we have in Vitu the concept of COC, which stands for center of competence. So we have a center of competence for doors, we have center of competence for uh, safeties, we have center of competence for cabins, we have center of competence for motors and so on. So irrespective of wherever you manufacture the component, the final design, the variants evolving, all of that have to be approved by the center of competence. And that is the reason why the design never wavers or moves away from the original. So a product that you buy in one part of the world will be exactly similar in another part of the world. So, Vitur is among the few in the industry who publishes an annual sustainability report and has been recently awarded with a silver medal. Congratulations for that, sir. How do you inspire your team to prioritize environmental and social responsibility? So, the sustainability initiative is a global initiative. It covers all of our plants uh, across mm -hmm. the world. Mm -hmm. And we look at uh, multiple things, not just the environment, but it also covers diversity. It also covers safety amongst others. So the target that we have is to do a 50% improvement from where we are today. And that's been a continuous target. Like if we have got silver, the next aim would be to go for gold. With over 600 patents and R&D centers spread across Italy, Germany, Austria, China, and even uh, so many test labs in India, how do you keep your spirits alive? And if you can share any exciting idea which was born out of this cross-border teamwork. So in India, the metro stations were facing a very unique problem. So the metro stations were in such a places that often they are half inside and half outside, partially exposed to the environment. Mm. So you have an elevator with a door that is exposed either to the setting sun or the rising sun. And the elevator is doors are made of metal. As the sun rays fall, it heats up. Right? Mm. The specifications of metro demand that these elevators should work in an ambient temperature of 50 degrees centigrade. But in reality what happens, even if the outside temperature is 50 degrees, the temperature on the metal surface goes up to 70 degrees. Oh. And when 70 degree happens, heat happens, then the metal tends to expand. When the metal expands, you have the door panel which is supposed to be vertical like this. It is trying to expand. At the top, it is fixed to the header or the mechanism, so it cannot go up. At the bottom, it is fixed to the sill, so it cannot go down. So what does it do? It starts bending, oh. right? So you get this kind of a curve. And when the mm. panel gets curved and the door tries to open, mm. it is going to scratch against the frame. That's a performance issue. And this was a problem that many metro stations in India, they have been grappling with for a very long time without a solution. So last year, the Vitur India team developed a solution oh. by which mm. 
this bending is restricted without increasing the thickness, without consuming more material. Now the deflection is just about 1.4 mm against an allowable 4 mm. Earlier it used to go up to 7 mm. Now there is no rubbing with the panel. Mm. The new design serves the purpose mm. without any increase in cost. And like I do always, we patented it. <laughs> right? right. So now we are the only company with a patented design that can work in semi-outdoor conditions without rubbing mm. against the frames. Right. So this is how <laughs> you know local ingenuity mm. collaborates with a global technology platform to come out with results that meet the expectations of the customer. Right. Okay. Uh, what inspired Vitu to design a dedicated home elevator system like Kodzai for Indian homes? Because so far in the Indian market, there are no branded players mm. who are offering home elevators, right? So usually most people go to hydraulic lifts, mm. not very few traction elevator players are there. So we decided to introduce our traction lifts. And the Quadzai is the original design is from Germany. Vitur has a brand called Lift Material, which specializes in home elevator system. So what we are selling as a Quadzai is essentially the Quads model from Germany. It's a ditto to ditto product but with certain customizations in India. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for example, a home elevator application, I will explain to you how different it is from a conventional elevator. In a conventional elevator, if you get stuck, either a neighbor mm -hmm. or any other user or maybe even the security will help you. But if you are stuck in a lift inside the home and there is nobody else at home, how do you get rescued? It's a dilemma, right? Mm -hmm. So, we have multiple layers of redundancy built into the design of our elevators. Now, in any typical elevator, if the power failure happens. The elevator would come to the lowest floors, the door would open because there is a battery that will allow this to happen and then you can get out safely. But what if the battery itself is totally discharged, right, and the power goes off. So what we did in our design that in the event this happens, our battery system is such that it completely discharges and recharges every week, right. So that way the battery is kept in prime health and even when the battery it is inevitable, it will lose its capacity after some time. It gives you a warning on the cabin operator panel, time to change. Our elevators are capable of working on inverters. So, in the event the power goes, mm. you still have the inverter that can take you up or down. It will operate for at least mm. 10 to 12 cycles before it discharges completely. So, that way people in the home are protected, very well protected in a Vitor mm. quartz size elevator. <laughs> right. Okay, looking ahead, what trends or disruptions do you foresee in home mobility and how is Vitur preparing to lead this transformation? So, in, in when you come to home mobility, one trend that has been there continuously for many years, along with urbanization, you see the family system moving from a joint family system mm -hmm. to a nuclear family system. And when the nuclear family system happens, the subsequent generation, what happens, they again move away from home. So, ultimately, you are left with elderly parents staying together alone while the children are working somewhere else, all of this happens. Mm. So when that happens, one of the most important factors to be considered is, is it friendly for old age people? They may need a wheelchair, they may need some other form of assistance. And if you don't have an home, home elevator, how do you get the mobility to travel between floors? Mm. Typically old age knee, knee problems will come up, they cannot climb up stairs. Mm. So for that reason, I think home elevators are beginning to change from being a luxury requirement to becoming a necessity, right? And when things become a necessity, then the approach to the product, approach to the service takes on a whole different meaning. So this is where we see the value. As families become more and more nuclear, those who can afford an independent house would prefer to have a home elevator inside. So how challenging is the current manufacturing landscape in India in terms of compliances, certifications and regulatory framework for escalator and elevator industry? It's a mixed bag. It's a really a mixed bag because there are very clearly defined standards. Mm. Elevators, escalators, commercial elevators, residential elevators to home elevators, it's clearly defined. And that is defined by BIS, the Bureau of Indian Standards. But the adoption or ensuring that these are enforced, it's a state subject. In different states uh, would have the responsibility of making sure that the lifts installed in their state is as per the standards based on which they issue a lift license. Now, as of now, there are, I believe, only about 15 states which have adopted the code, which means the remaining 15 do not. Mm -hmm. So, which means there is every chance there is no lift license in these states. If there is no lift license, there is nobody to monitor, there is nobody to certify 
that the lift that has been installed is as per the required safety standards. So, this I see as a big problem and in fact, um, as an industry person we have been advocating that like how you say one nation one law, mm. similarly that one nation one law should also apply for elevators. Why, why leave it to the states right mm. to decide what should be done, mm. what should not be done. A person who gets the benefit of the safety net from these standards in state A, a person in state B is being denied that, how is that fair? So, this is something I have been advocating for a very long time. I do hope that one day the government will take notice and make this as a central subject and ensure uniform deployment across uh, the country. But because this is right now having this kind of a different, uh, uh, what you call, enforcement, there are a lot of unscrupulous people, people who do it intentionally, many who do it unintentionally because they do not have the knowledge, their elevators do not comply with the standard, right? And whether an employer, an elevator, conforms to the standards or not is not known to an ordinary user. For example, you walk into a building, you have no idea whether that conforms to the yeah. code. So, that way even the builders do not have complete knowledge. Unless it is a manufacturer who has a reputation for complying with standards, for giving products of the right quality, it is very difficult to understand whether a particular elevator is fully compliant with the codes. Thank you so much, sir. It was a lovely interaction with you. It's, my, my, it's been my pleasure. Thank you for having me on the show. Thank you.